ever so slowly handing over to Tommy Lighting, the Senior Vice President International Products at DG Acute, and Tommy Scott, the talk with the longest title this morning, and it is <laughs> Breaking Down Technology and Application Silos. I couldn't actually remember all of it. I need to look at this. Cute at the forefront of future-proof modern application development. So please give a big hand to Tommy Lightin. Okay, thank you, Kalle. I really can't believe that this is 10th anniversary year of uh, having Dev Days. My first one was 2007, when I, I was giving a spe uh, speech where we are heading with the mobile development. And, and finally, I'm very happy to be here to share you some things we have done during the last 12 months as we finally have achieved our original vision where we are heading to with the mobile. Unfortunately, it seems to be so that I don't have my <coughs> pre presentation yet here. But as we have made the whole presentation with Qt, I have all, also my mobile version available here, so I can use this Android tablet to go through the first slides. Just a second. So what we have done during the next 12 months, basically, uh, if we start from the, from the Qt 5, we released Qt 5 in December. Uh, it really brings the technology up to the this de decade. Technology is state of the art. We have the architecture in place. We have the architecture to integrate it to different operating systems. The whole concept of software development was renewed. And I have to say that Qt 5 have been, uh, has been a, a very successful in, in, in that sense that it had been downloaded tens of or hundreds of thou thousands of times. We headed towards uh, Qt 5.1 which we released on July. Uh, we had three targets with this platform release. First of all, we would like, of course, to bug, uh, do some bug fixing with, with uh, Qt 5. We had to cut some angles with, with Qt 5. It was not perfect and at the uh, first place, but now Qt 5.1 was already quite mature version. Additionally, we added some new subsystems, new, new modules like Qt sensors, for example, and finally, we bring in a first look how we are able to build mobile application in the most popular operating systems, like Android and iOS back then. So we finally had, in a way, everything in place to accomplish our vision where one framework would rule all of the platforms. And that's, of course, the big vision we announced a year ago. Now taking a look uh, towards the future. 5.2 is in its uh, early stages. We have released Alpha. We could use a go. It's available in the source code mode. You can download it from our website or qt.qtproject.org or qt.dj.com. And, and you can build your own version if to the platform you, you select. Beta is coming later this year. And finally, we are going to release the actual version uh, in, in the beginning of December, hopefully. And with Qt 5.2, we finally achieved the target in a way that we have a perfect support for all the key platforms in the marketplace at the moment. And this is one of the key pieces of our strategy we announced a year ago. If you remember, we had the three items we said, said last year, we are going to be number one. First of them was cross-platform support. We are willing to be number one in native cross-platform support all over the uh, computing ecosystem. And we can say that with 5.2, we finally are there. Additionally, we promise to improve the developer experience. We have really worked hard to bring in new tooling, new components you can utilize, and new UI elements uh, with, within all of the platforms at the moment. Our origins are on the desktop development, but what we see happening in the marketplace is that multi-screen type of applications are obviously coming and, and soon most of the applications are available in all or at least on several different platforms. 
we conducted a user survey uh, on the summertime, and what we noticed there is that, that desktop is still very wrong within the Qt developers. But obviously, obviously we saw also that multi-screen is definitely something which is growing very fast. And multi-screen application typically also use different kind of cloud services, uh, store their data and, and manage their users and so forth. So basically this is something we really are investing at the moment. What about the future opportunities? Where we are heading to? What kind of investments we are making? What direction Qt is developing? If we take a look to the opportunity space, we definitely can see that our roots are on desktop. That's where Qt is coming from. So basically we have very solid, very large ecosystem and developer base existing in that arena. However, the market is evolving. All we know that the convergence between the desktop and mobile is, is progressing very fast. And the key part of that is, of course, tablets. Now with Qt 5.2, we are able to support a different kind of mobile devices like this Android tablet. My presentation is running very fluently here uh, in the same application, exactly the same application which I have here in desktop. So this is definitely something we are investing to. If we take a look to the mobile side, what is happening there at the moment? First of all, uh, we can see the business so that there is a consumer application market. You know the story about the app stores and, and the successful games and other utility applications over there. That's very familiar. Now we are providing tools that to develop applications to that big market as well. I already mentioned the end screen applications. That's very interesting side as well. Enterprise mobility is something where you are connecting different kind of business system directly to the end users, consumers, or your workers, mobile phones and tablets. Very lucrative markets. It's estimated that this particular market is growing from one billion dollar up to the five to six billion dollars within the next four years. Very lucrative business opportunities over there. Then specifically we have a mobile operating system markets. There are several companies investing heavily to develop their mobile assets together with Qt. Just to mention Blackberry, Yolla, Canonical, but also others. Then, very interesting, very, very fast growing market as well is Embedded. And especially Embedded when you consider the market uh, from the user interface perspective. We all know the iPhone phenomena in the marketplace. Everybody is looking to build similar type of user interfaces to their devices, to cars and different other kind of, let's say, consumer electronics, medical, uh, many others. Actually, we have very good presentation in the keynotes today when, when CEO of QNX is introducing, Dan Dodge is introducing us, his thoughts about, about the embedded market. We will hear much more we will hear much more about that later today. So if I have to categorize the business opportunities or the user segments, how we see the market, there are the traditional evolving desktop developer community. Then there is this huge growing embedded market. And additionally, as a third category, we see the mobile community, mobile development areas. Uh, as, a, as a source of the growth. What we need there, how we enable the growth, we really need an innovation platform. And that's what Qt is for. Qt is innovation platform where you can bring in your innovation to several different environments very easily with very, very uh, productive, productive way. Sorry, Kalle, but I couldn't see what was the number. So I have five minutes left. 15 to go. Oh, I'm already on the half of my presentation, so. Okay. Uh, how about the growth? As you see, we are in the bigger venue than last year. That's always a good thing. I hope that we are able to grow also in this community in a way that 
events are bigger, there are much more developers participating. Of course, we are doing also business. During the first half of this year, our revenue grew 38%. That's a very good thing. And I would say the thanks of that <laughs> belongs to our customers, but also to the whole ecosystem. And what we are doing with that growth, we are investing more to the development. We are channeling all the money coming from the market to the R&D and the business development. Bringing in new versions of Qt, bringing in new features, developing new approaches to the marketplace. I'm very happy to see what we have done during the last year. However, there are some missing pieces still which we haven't been able to deliver. I'm ca coming uh, to those a little bit later, but those kind of uh, approaches we are planning at the moment, like open business architecture, is something where you all can bring in your innovation to the same framework. And that's something I'm expecting that not only we are growing, but the whole community and all the partners, all the developers and, and all the initiatives around. So, what we are bringing into marketplace with Qt 5.2. Qt Mobile Edition is a product version of Qt, which is totally targeted for developing mobile applications. The target group and the user segment of this product is uh, individual mobile developers or software houses developing applications. What the actual product means, it's entirely new, new kind of business model. It's monthly based subscription, which is $190 per month. $149 per month, sorry. We have effective online channel for the distribution. We include full cute libraries with the commercial license. It means that you can deploy your applications with the uh, targeted mobile environments. At the moment, we are supporting iOS and Android. Later on, of course, we are bringing in new operating systems. But additional, with that price, you are also having a cloud data storage for your application data and the backend system and for user management. That's the product we call NGINO Qt Cloud. That's at the beta at the moment, but we are bringing it to the production pretty soon. And additionally, the price also include, includes uh, DGS uh, support teams involvement to your project if you are uh, choosing up so. So this is Qt Mobile Edition. Basically what we are targeting here, we are trying to get involved all those hundreds of thousands of mobile developers at the marketplace at the moment. This tool is very competitive against the market offering in this area at the moment. There are no such tool in the marketplace where you can develop native application so performance oriented as, as Qt is at the moment. So we are hoping that this product really finds, finds uh, its users in the marketplace. I already mentioned open business architecture. We are starting at the moment, currently, discussions with our partners, but with the whole community, how we could utilize the Qt ecosystem to leverage new innovations coming from the ecosystem, from the companies, from individuals, and also from academics, so that we could create a marketplace where everybody, everybody can pick up the best innovations and utilize them easily in their projects. That architecture should be included and integrated tightly uh, to, the, to the Qt on the product level. So that developer can, for example, from the creator, find the best components fitting to his purposes to develop his project further. It's kind of online channel for components and, and different kind of small code nipplets or, or even bigger uh, subsystems around Qt. 
And we should not look only to the good in, in, in tight manner. We should also see the contextual environment around. What is cloud offering? What is bringing into the application development? What other kind of components modern software development projects are involved to? So, how about you? How about good, good users? As mentioned, we made about three months ago a user survey, which by the way, you are having a good introduction by Kevin Franklin later today, actually after my presentation. Uh, at the moment in the ecosystem, we have over 500,000 developers. That's very big amount. I, I, I really like this idea that, that we are going to grow. We are bringing this technology uh, to the new areas like mobile and embedded, and we are growing in terms of ecosystem. That enables better investments, more involvement, more commitment, uh, more contribution from the ecosystem. It's really a, a very good uh, thing to us. But more importantly, good users are very satisfied to the product. product. In the scale from one to five, we asked how satisfied you are with Qt. 95% of answers were either into very satisfied, extremely satisfied or satisfied. And that's something I have never seen in any satisfaction survey. It's extremely good result. And of course, you have answered to that survey. And I'm more than happy and also humble against you here, ahead you here, that, that you really appreciate the technology we together have created. Good rocks in, in that se sense. Okay, that was pretty much I have prepared. There is still some time for the questions, I believe. If you have any, I'm more than happy to answer. If not, then thanks a lot. Uh, second. <laughs> There's a question here, actually. Uh, one platform that I was missing, I might have just not seen it, but uh, what about Windows Phone? Yeah, I didn't mention it uh, by purpose because Lars is going to introduce more the technical tracks, but Windows Phone or I would say Windows 8 support is in our, our roadmap. And at the moment we are planning to include it. Okay, the tech preview is coming with Vive 2, that's, that's for sure, but we are planning to have it uh, in a way finally supported in Vive 3 which is coming in the second quarter of next year. So it's in our roadmap and, and it's important. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tommy. And since we're 10 years old and we are a professional conference now, my event committee